All right, attendees, my name is Donald Finn. I'm really excited to give this talk on optimizing your call handling to grow your business. So let's jump right into it, okay? So, few disclaimers. I'm going to be covering a lot in a relatively short amount of time. So make sure you have your notepad ready and distractions minimized, right? I will talk about best practices for optimizing your call handling to help grow your business in 2020 and beyond. And then finally, of course, you get out what you put up. So make sure your focus on is on what you can implement from what I tell you today. So again, let's jump right into it. A little bit about me. Uh, I was born and raised in Chicago. I wanted to own a business as long as I could remember. And I did go to college, uh, Wisconsin-Madison. Not sure if there's any Badgers in the audience here, but I dropped out. Then I had an eight-year career in sales and sales management before starting my first profitable company at about 28 years old. And that company was Companion Maids. So that was the cleaning company we launched in 2014. Uh, it was actually because of uh, Rohan teaching. Uh, I was really excited about this company because my dad and I always wanted to start a company. We always dreamed of having one. And so we figured we'd eventually start one, and this was the one that we started. And we built it to $500,000 before we got acquired in 2017. So about a year into running the company, we realized that we were sick of answering our own phone calls. So after looking into the options, I realized that a virtual receptionist company was the best fit for our needs. And this led to me starting Vicky Virtual Receptionist. A bit about running a virtual receptionist company, we started as a call answering solution for fellow maid company owners. We launched in 2015, and we have served hundreds of cleaning companies, answering calls, booking appointments, and fielding customer service inquiries. So from these experiences, we did learn a lot, and eventually we naturally noticed some patterns, right? And some of these patterns worked, and of course some didn't. I've never shared any of these insights in detail, and I certainly never compiled it uh, until now. And so it's really awesome that you guys are here listening to this, because this is the first time. So here's what we learned. There were three main realizations. The first realization was catching every call is more important than even we thought. Like we knew it was important, didn't realize just how much. One thing that sort of uh, exemplified that, that 60% of potential clients actually prefer phone calling. Um, and that was surprising. And as few as 15% of missed calls will ever call you back, right? So if you get 10 calls, uh, in some cases less than two of those missed calls, if you have 10 missed calls, will ever call you back. That's a lot of money on the table. And also the average voicemail kicks in at 26 seconds. So the main thing you want to do, of course, is to avoid that. Now, realization number two is that answering the phone is only half the battle. Uh, proper phone handling is just as important as making sure you're answering the phone in the first place, right? 67% of lost clients are due to unsatisfactory customer service. And 91% of unhappy customers may not complain. And so that's crazy to me. In this business, we typically look to avoid blow-ups, right? Especially when it comes to cleaning. Uh, you know, people seem like they're very quick to voice when they're pissed off or they're concerned or whatever. But there's others that are probably subtly or casually or passively not quite satisfied, but they're not pissed off enough to really say anything, they'll just leave. And so one of the ways to retain those clients without realizing you're doing extra things to retain them is to master the phone. Now the third realization we had is that a phone interaction is the best way to convert incoming leads into clients. Now, some of you, especially with the booking platforms and all that, you may feel that, yeah, booking is very much preferred, which is true. However, the conversion rate of people going on you know, a website with a booking page versus calling you, on the phone, you're going to book 3 to 20 times as many people in terms of the number of traffic, the number of traffic, the amount of traffic that hits either of those sources. And so what that means is that your ability to master the phone interaction 
is your most important asset and definitely don't forget that. Okay? So a frustrating phone booking process can actually be a deterrent. So if you don't put proper effort into it, you're really leaving a lot of money on the table. So I've got best practices. Best practices for catching phone calls is first, right? The first is to make sure you have whole music set up. And preferably this whole music will have some type of quick welcome message that says, thank you for calling Companion Maze, where we can do this for you, we can do that for you, while the call is in the queue. The average caller that's in sort of a queue thinks that 30 seconds uh, was actually about 15 seconds. So they could actually be waiting for 30 seconds, and it feels like 15 seconds if you have the proper queue going, if it's engaging enough. Now, remember, the average abandon without hold music is only 26 seconds. But if you put on hold music, you actually have an abandon rate of 90 seconds. So when you have hold music, you get more than triple the patience from your potential client, from your existing client, from any caller that comes in. And so you're more than tripling your chances of being able to, to uh, have that conversation. So in terms of implementing uh, you know, the whole music and those types of things, I strongly recommend Grasshopper. We used it for VickyVirtual.com uh, as our main number. We used it for countless other businesses I've run, and they're very reliable. What I do not recommend is Google Voice. A lot of you will try to use Google Voice. Do not recommend it at all. They will force you into voicemail after about 25 seconds, and you have no control over that whatsoever. Okay? Now, my best practices for, you know, once you're answering the phone, proper call handling technique. The first is to shoot for voice over IP connections whenever possible. The ease and the clarity with which you are able to communicate with your client or potential client will have a measurable impact on your caller's initial and ongoing experience. So you want to use technology that helps you. The second is to smile as you speak. Call centers swear by this tactic for a reason. It works. If you smile on the phone, your tone improves, and your mood changes. So this will help your caller to stay on the phone longer, giving you a better chance of achieving your desired result. Existing client being able to, you know, make sure they stay with you, or book their next appointment, and of course prospect converting into sales. And then the third is to confirm key points. You want to make sure you confirm things that the caller site can help to uh, avoid confusion, mistake, and ensure understanding between both parties, which can be especially important when booking cleaning jobs, right? So you want to summarize what the caller said. Uh, if there's, you know, the number and the address, uh, the last name of the caller, especially if it's complicated, you want to phonetically confirm those things so that you don't get these things wrong because as we all know, sometimes those little nuances can uh, make or break once the cleaners show up, you know, supposed to do a specific type of job. And also, finally, confirming will reassure the caller that their needs are more likely to be met by you as a company. Now, what are best practices for increasing phone call conversions, right? You want to make sure you answer the phone. You want to make sure you're, you know, providing a good experience. But actually converting new clients comes down to three things. One, of course, availability. Two, price. And three, perception of quality, right? What is the confidence level for your prospect that you're the company to do the job? So I'm going to touch on each of these things to help you win more business. So first, my best tip for optimizing your availability, right? Now, as we all know, availability is about... Setting your schedule in a way that allows your current staff to work while throttling bandwidth properly so that you have the right amount of staff and the right amount of hours for those staff members to work, right? Now, a lot of people, I'm sure, are going to talk about the best way to handle managing your schedule in terms of throttling your staff. So I'm not going to talk about that. What I am going to focus on is something that I know a bit about, which is called location optimizing. So... Here's my best tip for optimizing your availability. So you want to have a zone-based map, and I'm really excited about this. This specifically is a map of the Chicago region, right? And you want to have this created for your specific territory. So as you can see, there are different zones. 
Uh, and in this case, I would recommend having a zip code based map, right? Especially for some of these larger cities, more populated cities. And so what that enables you to do is, you know, you have written down within the map or maybe on some type of uh, separate sheet next to the map, the travel time required to drive through a zone. And then you want to add as an internal only field that allows, maybe like a drop down, that allows staff to assign each booking to their specific zone within the region, right? And then you can let your scheduler know what team can work what zone. So that's simple enough, this system is simple enough for someone outside of your city to assist in scheduling in a way that actually works, such as a VA. That way they don't have to like, you know, look at Google Maps for every single address and determine, you know, the drive time in between and then still make mistakes. That can be too complicated for a lot of VAs, but following the zones is a lot easier. So this enables, uh, whether it's a VA or, you know, an agent or someone on your team to assign teams better and frankly deal with less issues, you know, due to things like traffic and, and other things that come up. Okay. Now, I also have uh, my best tip for a common pricing objection. Uh, there's many pricing objections that come up, and of course, a lot of those have to do with value, and then sometimes you're not in the proper range for your prospect. But the most winnable objection is having a satisfactory explanation for the deep clean versus standard cleaning conundrum, or whatever you dictate your service level to be. So I've seen this question handled a myriad ways by many companies, and this is what we found to be the best way to handle it. Okay? Keep it simple, short, and consistent. A lot of people try to complicate this, but you really don't have to. Simple as that. Uh, so the first sort of uh, tactic in doing this right is to let your website work for you. You want to try to solve this specific objection before it comes up by offering a fuller explanation on your site where your prospect can retain the information better. So this is priority number one. Okay. The second is to script out your statement and make sure that every call taker has access to it. You want all of your call handling to be an asset to help you close the deal. So fumbling around isn't going to help that happen. right? And then finally, instead of checklist specific, you want to generalize what the service end result will be. So instead of, you know, some checklist, say a deep clean is meant for homes that haven't been cleaned in two months or more. Whereas a standard clean is a maintenance clean for a home that receives regular upkeep. I'm sure some of you have heard that before. I'm telling you the way to go on this uh, specific uh, objection. So people will sometimes ask what specific checklist items are included after you say that. And at that point, you can answer. But the important overall message is to convey the overall goal of each service in a general feel. Okay? Now, here's my best tip for conveying quality, assuring the quality of service over the phone, especially on the first call. The first, have a call, a call scoring criteria checklist that agents can follow. This is a set of guidelines to cover on every single phone call, especially prospects, right? So also make sure all your call takers are informed of all of it before they take their first call. So consistency is going to be key, and knowing beforehand will enable your agent to be more confident after taking calls for you. And then also you want to make sure you record your calls. Uh, you know, have someone on staff that we can view that can review all your call recording against the call scoring criteria, and then they can relay suggestions for improvement. Okay, and so a prospect over time, as you know, every call taker improves. A prospect, a prospective client that senses that your agents know what they're talking about, they're going to have more confidence in booking you for their cleaning service. Okay, so circling into how do you implement? Well, there's four main options, and they're very simple. One is to build a solution internally. The second is to hire a virtual receptionist company like Vicky Virtual. The third is hiring a VA or a VA company. And then four is, you know, some type of uh, combination of that. And I do have recommendations for what to do given a certain company size. So 
say you are in between zero and a hundred grand a year, you want to answer yourself if available, if you can. I think it's very important to take calls early on. You get a much better understanding, thorough understanding of the business, um, and it's just so important. Uh, the second thing, or maybe the only thing, alternatively, use a virtual receptionist company. Again, Vicky Virtual, good. Uh, you can either use them completely or supplementary to you answering the phone. Now, once you hit 100 grand, in between 100 and 300, you can either use a virtual receptionist company or you can use a virtual assistant. You don't, you probably don't need more than one at this point. Uh, you can do either or, you probably do not need both. Okay? Now, between 300 to a million a year, I know it seems like a big jump here, but there's really not that much different to him that happens on the call handling side uh, during this time period. And during this time period, you can have a virtual receptionist company or you can have a small team of VAs. And we're talking one to three VAs, uh, maybe with a supplement uh, from the virtual receptionist company. Or you can consider an in-house person at this point once you get closer to $1 million. And by in-house, I mean someone that works specifically for your company. That's their job. Uh, and they're either in an office or maybe they're at home. That they work just for you, okay? And then once you hit a million a year, I don't really recommend a virtual receptionist company to take all your call, uh, maybe supplementary. So call overflow, you know, if your internal staff is out sick on vacation, uh, the virtual receptionist company can take the calls on that day. And then also if your internal staff doesn't pick up quickly enough, the call, that given call can forward over to a virtual receptionist company to supplement. It's called call overflow. Uh, the other option, of course, is to have the in-house team as opposed to one. Uh, and you can do, you know, people or very talented virtual assistants. Okay? So here's an example of someone that's doing this. Meet Elena, owner of Superb Maids in Las Vegas. She started off answering their own phones early. Uh, she transitioned to Vicky Virtual to handle all of her calls. And then once she got to a certain point, she built an in-house team of a few receptionists and then used Vicky Virtual for call overflow, just like I said earlier, right? Uh, and simply, to make a long story short, she had processes in place that evolved as they scaled from six to seven figures. So now they're a multiple seven-figure company and they have internal staff with call overflow, okay? Then you've got Marcus. He's the owner of Made Easy in Phoenix, Arizona. So he started off Again, he was answering the phone himself. Uh, then he transitioned to Vicky Virtual to handle the call. And then they transitioned to virtual assistants in the Philippines, uh, as opposed to in-house American, uh, to handle multiple roles, including call answering, right? So he hired staff. Uh, and within Phoenix, uh, they have a large geographical area, and they had you know, sort of an issue with making sure the scheduling was done correctly with Filipino agent. So uh, he's utilizing zone mapping to help with that scheduling issue. Okay. So let's recap. Uh, first thing you got to make sure you do is answer the phone quickly, but also provide a great calling experience. It's just as important for your prospect as well as for your existing client. Uh, secondly, you want to make sure you use hold music to reduce abandon rates and then triple the amount of patience your potential callers have. Uh, and then three, winning the client is about being available, confident, and clear on what you are providing. Making sure your business is set up to do that in the best way possible really is 80% of the battle, and it makes it easier for your call taker to close the deal. And then, of course, you want to use different call handling options uh, that fit the best stage of your business. Be willing to evolve as your company changes size. Okay? Have a call going criteria checklist to make sure your calls are being handled well. And that's it. Uh, I have a free offer for you guys. Um, you know, it's, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I've created a free four-day virtual reception if many records for some of the attendees. And you can read that at callcentercast.com slash made summit. And it covers some aspects in terms of hiring a receptionist, um, you know, what is a virtual receptionist company in more detail, those types of things. So you can utilize that information to uh, sort of bring in your own staff 
or you consider actually being a service for attendees uh, such as the ones that made Summit and being a Vicky Virtual Receptionist competitor. It's a great business for us. And what I think would be a bit more relevant for right now, bonus free offer. Uh, I'm, after, I'm actually offering a free download of the exact call scoring criteria sheet Vicky Virtual use to quality check our calls. So remember I mentioned about having a call scoring criteria sheet. This enables your agent or you know people to quality check your call to make sure certain steps are being accomplished on every single call to make sure that the phone handling is done the way you want it and uh, in, in terms of best practices for the industry. So again, the exact call scoring criteria sheet, I've never offered it before and you get it. Just enter in your email, you'll be enrolled into the four day free mini course as well as be given access to it as an immediate download. Callcentercast.com last made summit. And finally, I really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to listen to the talk here. Love being here at the Virtual Maid Summit. Uh, hope to be around next year. And again, you can reach me at hello at donaldfan.com and then enter in your email at callcentercast.com slash maid summit. Other than that, uh, there's been some great speakers and great talk this year. So I'm lucky and very privileged to be a part of it. So thank you.